Hey there everyone, this is Elias Kinaser and the following demonstration is from my Citrix Zen Desktop 5 training course. To install the VDA, what I've done is I've copied the Zen Desktop 5 ISO down to the virtual machine where I want to install it at, and I've mounted the ISO as a CD-ROM. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on Computer, and we're all we're actually going to launch that ISO. And you'll notice that the second option here is install a virtual desktop agent. So I'm going to let the wizard guide me through the installation. And now you have two options. You can do a quick deploy, but if you do a quick deploy, you must have the equivalent configured on the, the controller already in the desktop studio as the quick deploy wizard. That should have been deployed. Otherwise, you're going to select the advanced installation. Since the advanced install is going to give us more options, we're going to go through that. So what's going on here is it detected that there is a Windows driver WDDM that is a conflicting driver other than the set of drivers that the VDA is going to install. So rather than installing both, it's going to disable one of the drivers ahead of time and allow the system to use the drivers that the VDA is going to install. So I'm going to accept that it disables this and I'm going to say yes. At this point, it's telling you what are the different components that it wants to install. Now, something cool to note here is if you wanted to pre-populate the Citrix Online Plugins URL so that you can deliver seamless applications to this desktop automatically, what you would have to do is put the URL of your web interface server here. So what I'm going to do is do HTTP, and we're going to do 10.4.15.94. At this point, I'm going to click on Next to continue. And this is the step in the installation of the VDA, where you choose whether you're going to use registry-based discovery of the Zen Desktop 5 controller, or you're going to use Active Directory-based. So if you're going to use registry-based, then all you have to do is put in the IP address or fully qualified domain name of the Zen Desktop 5 controller, or if you want to test the settings that we've been configuring with the Active Directory integration, then you can select from the Active Directory drop down here, and voila, you'll notice that it automatically detected it in Active Directory, and we are going to choose that for now. Of course, you can always select to do this at a later time, but just to validate our configuration, we're going to go with our Active Directory configuration. I'm going to click on Next. These are all the configuration changes that the VDA is going to make. You can feel free to unselect anything from these checkboxes that you don't want the setup wizard to configure. I'm going to leave everything at default, click on next, and install. And that's all there is to it. And there you have it. The VDA installation is now complete. As you notice here, it requires a reboot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot the virtual machine. We're going to log into this virtual machine one more time and take a look at some of the settings. And then we're going to log into the desktop controller and see if the VDA is properly communicating with it. So we're going to click on close. And it's automatically going to reboot the VM. So we've logged back into the virtual machine after a reboot. And there's one thing I want to show you before we move on to the desktop controller. If you click down here by the taskbar, you'll notice that it installed the Citrix Online plugin. What we want to verify here is that the URL was properly set. So if you click on, right-click on it and then click on Change Server, you'll notice that it properly set the URL to the PNA site that we had created in Web Interface. So I only entered the IP address and it automatically appended the proper syntax to that. So now if we have a Zen app server installed in the environment and our site is properly configured, then you'd be able to pass through automatically and deliver these applications directly to the desktop or to the start menu without having to do anything else. That way your Zen app applications are now available to your users. Some very, very powerful stuff. All right, so let's get out of the virtual machine here, log on to the Zen Desktop 5 controller and see if proper communication has been established. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on machines here and then I'm going to double click on one of the catalogs and look at that. We have one of the machines in a ready state, which means there's proper connectivity between the VDA agent and the actual virtual machine. 
The Zen Desktop 5 can control it and tell it what it needs from a command execution standpoint. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.